Wherever you are on the planet, not far from you is a plant like this, working 24-7. It produces the world's most consumed soft drink, Coca-Cola. Every day, the multinational sells almost 2 billion bottles. In 126 years, the red and white brand has colonized the world without ever giving up its secret recipe. But why such mystery? What's hidden inside? What are we actually drinking? The multinational refuses to reveal its recipe, so we went in search of its hidden ingredients. Our investigation begins in Atlanta, the Coca-Cola capital of the world. It's here that the drink was born in 1886. A stone's throw from its headquarters, the company has opened a museum to glorify the brand. It was here in 2011 that Mutar Kent, the group's CEO, officially hid the secret recipe in a giant safe. A safe that stands in the middle of what looks like a theme park for Coke fans. And thank you again for joining us here today at the World of Coca-Cola! What Coca-Cola is trying to display is the wonderful world the company has fashioned in 126 years of existence. A world of happiness, just like in its commercials. Here, families pose for photos with the brand's mascot, the famous polar bear. Coca-Cola have agreed to let us film as long as we're escorted by the museum's security chief and a press attaché. What's inside this drink to cause, right this instant, over 78 million people worldwide to open a can or bottle of Coke? Here they cultivate the secret and play on it. It's even become a promotional tool so Coca-Cola doesn't skimp on staging. Come on in, follow me. <laughs> A secret formula for the most deliciously different taste the world has ever known. A secret formula for all that is, was, and ever will be. The heart of Coca-Cola. I cannot open it. It doesn't work. You have to let go. They can't have you hold on it. It's security. I want to know. Get to step back. Don't just send alarm to the. Oh, you mean that security is going to come? No. What's going to happen is the police officer is going to come. <laughs> okay, I'm going to wait for them here. Okay, I think it's a part of a show. It is in there. I can't show it to you. You ready? Okay. Who should I contact? Who should I contact to know the formula? Coca-Cola cuts short our visit. We won't find out any more. We're not the first to try to uncover one of the best-kept industrial secrets in the world. The brand's competitors, fans, and even chemists have all tried to analyze the famous soft drink, but in vain. Nobody has ever managed to identify all the ingredients. Until the day a US radio station announced an amazing discovery. We think we may have found the original recipe for Coca-Cola, and I am not kidding. I am not kidding. One of the most famously guarded trade secrets on the planet. I have it right here. It was a surprise when uh, we stumbled across an article. One of their columnists, Charles Salter, without any fanfare at all, published what looks like the original recipe for Coca-Cola. 
Charles Salter lives in the Atlanta suburbs. He's now retired after 25 years working for a local daily newspaper. This is my fishing tackle room, and I tie flies. Fishing is your hobby. Fishing is my uh, hobby, my pastime. Why don't you take a look over there and, and see if there's a cardboard box? The formula is somewhere uh, here. Take uh, a look. No, it's the no, cassette. Be... Have you look? It cannot be here. No, that's fly tying material. It's the only corner we haven't looked. Oh. Yes. Oh. Voila. <laughs> it takes it on. <laughs> it's so exciting. So you think it's somewhere here? Yeah, the photographs. In 1979, I went to Gainesville, Georgia, and talked to my old friend, fishing buddy uh, Everett Beale and his wife Judy, who have a drugstore there. And he said, Charles, take a look at this. Coco Cola improved. When I made this photograph and I looked at Everett and Judy, I said, holy mackerel, I've got the story of the year. <laughs> this document supposedly dates from 1910. It's a handwritten copy in poor condition of the original recipe. The first surprise is that Coca-Cola contained alcohol, but also lemon, orange, and coriander extracts. And at the top of the list, an astonishing ingredient. What's that? Coca. F-E, coca. Extrait. Extrait de, de feuilles de coca. coca. I think it was quite a surprise to a lot of people who read my Georgia Rambler column to see these ingredients. And there was certainly discussion uh, in the Atlanta area. I thought it was a very significant scoop. <laughs> but Coca-Cola did not confirm that it was an early formula. And um, I would like to believe it was an early formula, but this is, this is one of those mysteries that it would be so difficult to prove. So one of the ingredients in the original recipe was coca plant leaf and its derivative cocaine which is why the soda was named Coca-Cola. But why add a drug to a soft drink? The answer is 25 miles away in the city of Columbus. This is where John Pemberton lived, the man who invented Coca-Cola. A quaint old house turned into a museum, all that's left of the pharmacist's history. A history the brand prefers to ignore. Qu'est-ce qu'il faisait ce, ce pharmacien? He, he invented lots of different drinks. So these are a couple of the advertisements that were here um, in Columbus. And so he was always kind of mixing up different drinks. Um, a lot of times people thought of sodas and things kind of as medicine. And so that is why. A lot of pharmacies were also soda shops then, because they were pretty much the same thing. You, that's where you got your sodas. Et à la base, le Coca-Cola, c'était un médicament. Yes, Coca-Cola was a medicine at the beginning, um, and it did have cocaine in it at the beginning. Or it was supposed to be, like, help you with whatever injury, with whatever pain you had, or any kind of stomach ache, headache, you know, normal kind of aches that you would have. So all of that. Mais pourquoi Pemberton a mis de la cocaïne? Dans le Coca-Cola. Um, he became addicted to morphine after after the Civil War because he was injured. And so it gave it kind of that addictiveness, but it was still, it wasn't an, as, you know, as bad as morphine and things, but... Vous faites, vous faites visiter cette maison à des, des classes, des enfants, et vous leur dites pas, en fait, qui était vraiment euh, le docteur John Pemberton. Vous leur parlez pas de, de, son, de son problème avec la drogue, vous parlez pas de cocaïne? No. Um, I mean, we just like to give kids the, the basic about Coca-Cola and um, we, don't, we don't tell them about that it has cocaine in it or did have cocaine in it or anything like that. Um, we like to give them a more idealized version of cocaine, I mean, of Coca-Cola. 
A pharmacist hooked on cocaine and putting the drug in his drink leaves a nasty stain on the wonderful world of Coca-Cola. The red and white brand hasn't changed its name, but does the famous soda still contain the extract of cocoa plant leaves? New York is home to one of the few Americans who dares challenge the world's most powerful brand. The founder of the campaign to stop Killer Coke is Ray Rogers. For 10 years, this trade union activist has been denouncing what he calls the hidden face of Coca-Cola. Ramon, you get fired. Now you go out to find another job. So, you know, Luis, what happened? I've uh, been looking for work for 10 months. Around the table, 15 employees or former employees of Coca-Cola plants. They plan to file a lawsuit for harassment in the workplace and racial discrimination. These workers make the soft drink for millions of Americans. They don't know the recipe. All they do is mix the cola syrup with water before it's bottled or canned. Is one of you have heard of seen coca leaves? The, uh, um, we've heard of it but we're never allowed to see it because, once again, the syrup is not made here. But we have heard uh, things... Est-ce que vous pensez qu'il y a des produits utilisés qui sont dangereux? Without a doubt, yes. I remember um, we get um, concentrated soda that comes in barrels, and these really big barrels of plastic that have a cage, a metal cage around them. And I've seen that thing literally strip the paint right off the floor. It would take the paint right off the floor. And, and you cannot touch it with your hands. It's a highly caustic acid. And even the cleaners that they have to clean that with is uh, highly caustic. You can't even touch it with your hands. But normally it's just sugar and some flavors. No, and... no, 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 no. I wish it was. I wish it was, but that's not, that's not what it is. They don't want to let us know exactly what's going into that product. I don't understand how can any government allow any company to make something that the product, the ingredients of that product, is secret. We have children drinking this. Over the years, Ray Rogers has discovered enough information to embarrass the soft drink giant. He takes us far from uptown New York to one of the ports of New Jersey. According to him, this is where the company still discreetly imports the favorite ingredient of pharmacist John Pemberton. Very impressive area. Well, this is where they bring in a lot of coca leaves from uh, Bolivia and Peru. And yes, yeah, so the ships arrive here, and uh, coca leaves are only allowed to be imported into this country for two reasons. Uh, one reason is for medicinal purposes, and the other reason is for Coca Cola that they use in the production of some of their beverages. And that, to my understanding, is the only way the coca leaves can be imported into this country. And most of them come in from, I understand, Bolivia and Peru. Ça veut dire qu'aujourd'hui, aux États-Unis, en dehors des euh, laboratoires pharmaceutiques, Coca-Cola est la seule entreprise à pouvoir importer de la feuille de coca ici. Yes, I think uh, Coca-Cola does not like to admit that it used coca leaves in the production of some of its beverages. Well, then one would have to ask, why is it then that they're bringing in all these coca leaves? What are they doing with them? Well, they must be putting it in their beverages, right? So why don't they admit it? And I guess. If you look on the bottle of Coca-Cola, you don't see an ingredient that says coca leaves you. <laughs> C'est écrit nulle part, non? That's kind of interesting, because my understanding is you're always supposed to have whatever ingredients. They may have a secret formula, but uh, maybe that's what the secret formula really is. It's some of the coca leaves in the production. That's probably, that's the big secret that nobody's supposed to know. It seems then that the world's biggest selling soda still contains coca plant leaves. But Ray Rogers believes they're only used in flavoring for their bitter taste. To eliminate the cocaine, the Atlanta giant is thought to use a specialized firm, Stepan Company. Its plant is just a few miles from the port. Hello, madam. 
Right, I tried to call many times to reach someone here, and I would like to know if it's, is, it, is it the place uh, where you process coca leaves here? Let me see if someone can. Thank you. Yeah, but we can't discuss our customers here, so that's why. But, yeah, but I mean, is, nobody can tell me, is, is it the place where you process coca leaves in port from Yeah, Peru? but we can't discuss our customers. Yeah, well, we can't help you here. Okay, I mean, you don't have any manager. You're gonna have to have a good day. Okay, I mean, there's no way. I mean, I think it's my right to know that, you know? Have a good day. Clearly, it's not just Coca-Cola that likes to keep secrets. Hello, sir. Did you bring some coca leaves in the plant? Hey, sir. Are you, are you going to Coca-Cola? I'm not bringing it there, but it is eventually going there. Oh, OK. Uh, because, I mean, uh, Stefan is uh, processing coca leaves, right? I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, but do, what do you have in your truck? I got drums of liquid. Uh, what is What kind of liquid it is? It's just going to Coca-Cola. As far as I know, it could be a syrup. It could be, I don't know. And don't know. you don't know what it is inside, no, the liquid? It's, it's a food grade. I'm trying to figure out what are the ingredients in Coca-Cola. I don't know. Yeah, they don't let us know that. Yeah, I mean, it's secret? Of course, like everything else. Bye. Stepan does supply Coca-Cola with a mysterious liquid. But has this product anything to do with the coca plant leaf? Excuse me, I, do you live here? I live around here. Yeah, do you know um, Stepan Company? Yeah. Do, yeah, and do you know what they are doing? What kind of... Uh... Well, I know a yeah. long time ago I actually worked out. I'm an electrician. I used to make cocaine there, like way back then. I'm talking like 15, 20 years ago. Oh, okay. They were, make, they were making cocaine. I, that's what I was told. I, I did electrical work in there. And now you don't know what they are doing? I, I haven't worked there in... 15 years. You know, Coca-Cola still use coca sure. leaves? Yeah. You know that? Right. And uh, I, I thought somebody told me that it was in this plant that they are, they are processing the coca leaves. It's possible. I know yeah. they used to make cocaine, but it's, okay. you know, medical grade cocaine. Okay. Basically, what Stepan refuses to say is that trucks leave their plant to deliver at Coca-Cola. There's no longer any cocaine in the soda, but it does appear to contain the extract of coca plant leaf. Why does the world leader in soda try to hide this ingredient? After two months of asking for an interview, 12 phone calls and 21 emails, Coca-Cola USA will give us the same answer as its French subsidiary. Yes, Amanda, it's Olivia. I'm How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm sorry. I, I cannot hear you with a cell phone. Oh, OK. Um, I wanted to let you know that we're not going to be able to provide anyone for you to speak with in New York, so there's no need for you to extend your stay there. On your side, I mean, uh, yeah, for sure, I'm not going to have anyone in USA. That's what you told me. Correct. There won't be anybody here. Correct. OK. OK. Thank you for having trying. Thank you, Amanda. Yes, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Coca-Cola is the world's biggest selling beverage, but its drinkers don't have the right to know what they're drinking. In the US, however, the brand is being accused more and more, not over its secret formula, but over another ingredient, one we're all familiar with. On the other side of the country, one state has declared war on soda. In California, it's now prohibited to sell sweetened drinks in public places and schools. We should point out that 40% of Californians are overweight or obese. But it's not that easy to change the American way of life. The anti-soda brigade is up against war machines like Coca-Cola, which spend billions of dollars on advertising. Harold Goldstein is California's leading anti-soda campaigner. He knows the battle is far from won because everything is done to make Americans consume even more sweet, fizzy drinks. Uh, I would like a large, uh, a big, a big Coke. So watch my water come. 
That's mine. So that's yours. And here comes my water. Okay. Oh. Yeah. This is really small. <laughs> and your order is 24. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I can have it. As much, you can keep refilling it as many times as you'd like. Yeah. That's a problem. That's a big, big problem. Yes, that's the problem. We can have it as much as I want. I can come and serve it. Just keep filling it up. If that, if, as if that's not enough for you, come back and have some more. It's a déjeuner équilibré, ça. Here you go. Yeah. You have enough calories yet? Yeah, no. That's a half a liter. It is. And so that's a half a liter. Um, it's even more. It's actually more like three quarters of a liter. Um, the average American drinks 45 gallons of soda a year. <laughs> 45 gallons of soda a year is 42 pounds of sugar. My son weighed about that when he was five years old. So the average American is drinking a five-year-old's worth of soda a year. It's a tsunami of, of sugary drinks. C'est quoi l'intérêt pour les grandes compagnies de soda d'augmenter la taille? Parce que c'est toujours le même prix, c'est très peu cher. Donc, c'est quoi leur but? Pourquoi ils veulent augmenter les quantités? I, I think their only reason for doing that, and I think their only reason for doing most anything, is because it's good for their bottom line. If you're drinking lots of it, chances are you're going to want to drink lots of it next time, too. So it might be a bargain to buy um, 32 ounces of soda in a fast food restaurant. But when you go out to the supermarket and you want to buy more um, to bring home with you, it's going to cost you more. So everything they do is about making more money. Again, in some ways, that's their job. but. This could be the first generation in modern history of kids in America that live shorter lives than their parents. We need to find an alternative to, to all of this high-fat, high-sugar food. We need to. Our kids' lives depend on it. 50 years ago, we drank four glasses of Coke a year. Today, sweetened drinks are gradually replacing water and milk. Sodas have even become the primary source of sugar and calories in the American diet. A few months back, a top specialist in obesity alerted the world. According to Dr. Lustig, the sugar contained in soft drinks is quite simply a poison. Est-ce que vous pouvez me montrer l'équivalent de sucre qu'il y a dans cette canette? Est-ce qu'on peut voir combien ça fait? That can has 39 grams, and it's four grams per teaspoon. Okay. So basically, this would have okay. one, <laughs> two, <laughs> two, <laughs> two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, la, la. ten. There we go. That's how much sugar is in this can. Donc quand je bois ça, j'ingurgite en fait cette quantité de sucre. Absolutely. No difference. Okay. The reason why people can't stop drinking it is because the sugar is affecting that area of the brain, making it very hard to quit. And we have kids and adults for that matter who are true sugar addicts that it affects the reward center of the brain. The same area that nicotine, cocaine, amphetamine, uh, heroin, morphine, etc., all work on. And it basically increases reward. The problem is that the more reward, the more of the neurotransmitter in the brain, dopamine, which conveys reward, the more that system down regulates. And therefore, the more you have to consume in order to get the same effect the next time. And that phenomenon is called tolerance. And then if you withdraw that, that's called withdrawal, and you get physiologic symptoms. And you put tolerance and withdrawal together, and you have addiction. And we now know that sugar does exactly the same thing as all of those substances of abuse, although somewhat weaker. Moi, je vois de plus en plus d'enfants, même très jeunes, boire du Coca-Cola. C'est quoi l'effet sur leur santé? Terrible. Disastrous. And we see it all the time. 
In obesity clinic, we measure plasma lipid levels, and kids have lipid levels like, you know, 65-year-olds. All of the diseases of adulthood that we ascribe to getting older are now happening in children as early as age 8 to 10. It's a disaster. Type 2 diabetes, we know, is very specifically related to total sugar consumption, and we have done that work here. You look very angry against this industry. I th take care of obese children. I take care of children who are going to die early. They're going to lose 20 to 30 years of life. They are also going to cost this country $192 billion a year in lost revenue from decreased productivity. There will be no health care by 2024. Medicare will be broke. I have a reason to be angry. I'm a physician. I'm supposed to be helping people. I can't help them if the food industry hurts them. Yes, I'm a little angry. How many years of life do you lose from smoking two packs of cigarettes per day? About 20. That's about the same if you consume two cans of soda per day. So one Coke, who cares? 10,000 Cokes, you're going to die. To get this message across to youngsters, California is stepping up its public awareness campaign, with some ads deliberately out to shock. Here are your sodas, and here's your obesity, your heart disease, <laughs> and your risk of stroke. Wait, don't you want your diabetes? <laughs> Faced with silence from Coca-Cola, we wanted to get the views of the soft drink industry in general. In Sacramento, we're about to meet its spokesman, a lawyer who defends the interests of all soft drinks makers. Ces 30 dernières années, la consommation de boissons sucrées a doublé, la taille des gobelets a triplé. Donc pour vous, il n'y a aucun lien entre l'obésité et les sodas. I don't think that consuming a soft drink, as you said you like to do, uh, means that you're not going to be, that you're going to eat uncontrollably, or that, you know, it may not fill you up when you drink it, but uh, you should be aware that those are calories, um, and that you would adjust your, your diet accordingly. So um, we don't encourage people to overconsume sugar or anything else. We don't, I, think we, I don't think we encourage people to overconsume our product, but we do believe that consuming soft drinks in moderation is perfectly healthy. Pour vous, les gens qui sont dans les hôpitaux en ce moment, les gens qui, sont, qui souffrent d'obésité, de diabète, euh, sont des gens qui n'ont pas fait assez attention, ils n'ont ils pas, pas consommé modérément du Coca-Cola, et c'est ça le problème Enfin, du Coca-Cola ou d'autres boissons Do we take responsibility for that I think we take responsibility for our product and for offering consumers a choice and variety. Um, but I don't think that we take responsibility for obesity's existence, no. I, I don't agree with that. This is six, seven, ten, ten spoons of sugar by cans, okay? Do you still think that it's not, it's not health, it's healthy? According to you, I just want, I mean, yeah. I, I just I, want... I think that we all make choices every day. There will people who will go in and have a latte with a dollop of whipped cream on top and add sugar to it and may have several of those a day that may have the same amount of sugar that's contained there. Um, I think we need to be conscious of that, and I think we need, and I think the industry is doing a lot to make that even more apparent to people, and I think that's the best answer to all this. Um, do I think that's unhealthy? No, I don't think that's unhealthy. If you're asking me to agree to that, I don't think it's unhealthy. And if you choose to avoid that, there are beverages that do not contain. Is que la solution c'est ça? Is que la solution c'est les soda light, les cola light? Right. Parce que du coup, il y a plus de sucre, donc il y a plus de problème. Everyone wants to know about diet sweeteners. Me too. I want to know about diet sweeteners. There's a problem. We don't know anything about diet sweeteners. How come we don't know anything? We don't know what aspartame does to your long-term energy intake or resting energy expenditure or long, you know, downstream metabolic health. We don't know any of those things. We don't have any data. And until we have data, I can't say, because I'm about the science. 
So until we know that, how can I say that diet sweeteners are the answer or not? We don't know anything about diet sweeteners. And until we do, it will remain a mystery. Basically, consumers have the choice of drinking sugar and being sure that with high doses it's dangerous, or drinking diet sodas and being sure of nothing. In either case, there's one ingredient they can't avoid, E150D, better known as caramel coloring. This is what gives colas their distinct color, a very controversial color in California. Coca-Cola and Pepsi have even had to change their recipes in this state. The scientist behind the latest uproar has arranged to meet us in this diner. About five years ago, it was demonstrated that caramel coloring contains a cancer-causing contaminant. What coloring manufacturers do is take sugar, add some ammonia, add some acid, and then put it under high pressure. And that creates the caramel color, but it also creates new chemicals. One of the chemicals that forms is 4-methylimidazole, or 4-MI. But it was only a few years ago that studies were done that demonstrated that that chemical is a cancer-causing chemical in animals and probably in humans. The state of California told the soft drink industry that they would have to put a cancer warning notice right on the label unless they got rid of that contaminant. Uh, it's possible for le leukemias are the, the likeliest. A few weeks back, we asked Mike Jacobson to analyze some cans of Coke we bought in France, because the recipe clearly varies from country to country. Et en ce qui concerne la France, euh, les, ça veut dire que le niveau qu'il y a dans les canettes que je vous ai envoyées est supérieur au seuil fixé par les Californies. California's limit is 29 micrograms. Okay. So this is 31 is about the limit, 4 is un, well underneath the limit. And uh, uh, France, uh, regular Coca-Cola had 79 micrograms, okay. which is about more than twice the amount California would allow and the, the two cans of light Coke have uh, more than three times as much. California would require a warning notice. It would state something like, this product is known to the state of California to cause cancer in animals. And that would not be very popular. No. So far, only California has targeted this chemical coloring. In Europe, the health authorities don't seem that bothered. On the American continent, Coca-Cola is becoming more and more controversial due to another ingredient. And not just any ingredient, the main one, water. It takes three liters of water to make one liter of Coca-Cola. In San Cristobal in Chiapas, there's no lack of water. This region is Mexico's reservoir, heaven on earth for any soft drink maker. So it's no surprise that in the 1980s, the multinational decided to open one of its plants here. Bueno, la Coca-Cola se instala ahí porque almacena el agua, extrae el agua de la cuenca de San Cristóbal, que hay un escurrimiento de dos volcanes, el, el volcán Huitepec, el volcán Sontewitz, y es donde se almacena el mayor flujo de agua en el subsuelo. Entonces, la Coca-Cola está estratégicamente ubicada encima del manto freático de San Cristóbal. Trae alrededor de 750.000 litros por día. ¿Es qué? ¿Es el equivalente de qué? El volumen de agua que utiliza Coca-Cola ahora alcanzaría para darle agua a 10.000 personas de San Cristóbal diario. Ah. 
Mais j'imagine qu'avec le nombre de litres d'eau qui prélèvent chaque jour, ils doivent payer très cher et dédommager la région pour tout ça, non <rire> Non. Non, bueno, la... Eso, es una... Es una distribución del agua in, in, poco equitativa. Ahora no sé exactamente la cifra, pero en el año 2003 pagaron alrededor de 350 mil pesos al año. Es una porción mínima. For hundreds of millions of liters of water, Coca-Cola's main ingredient costs the company practically nothing. Antonino believes that the reason the U.S. giant is so well treated in Mexico is because of Vincente Fox, the country's president until 2006. Before being elected, he was the CEO of Coca-Cola Mexico. Coca-Cola is using more and more water, and recently, water shortages have become more and more frequent. Allí hay cinco comunidades que utilizan el agua y que con la instalación de la planta de Coca-Cola eh, yo realicé trabajo de investigación ahí con ellos también y ellos me dijeron que sus fuentes de agua están siendo disminuidas. The first families affected are in Ocotal, on the slopes of the volcano, just above the Coca-Cola plant. Tomás, buenas tardes, ¿cómo estás? Thomas is the leader of this small community. He shares his home with nine other people. For the last few years, their daily life has been a nightmare. No hay agua. ¿Y se comes out all the time? Cuando los manantiales bajan, nos quedamos sin agua. Es que el manantial está a un nivel con las mangueras. Y si baja, nos quedamos sin agua. ¿Y ahora cómo vous faites cuando no tenéis agua? Pues tenemos ya cargarlo con cubetas de otro pozo. A donde hay agua, pues. Tengo que agarrar cubetas. No hay cubetas acá. Tengo que agarrar una cubeta para traer y ya. Para la ropa, para los trastes, para la comida. Es un verdadero problema. The water is being cut off for longer and longer periods. So in Ocotal, they're happy when it rains. Tomamos el agua. La ponemos acá. Se toma esta agua. La sacamos de ahí se toma esta agua. ¿Es bueno? ¿Ok? ¿Está rica? Sí. ¿Está bien? ¿Está bien? Al menos nos quita la sede. ¿De acuerdo? ¿Pero usted está malado cuando usted bebe esto? Pues nosotros que estamos grandes, no, pero a ver, le hacen mal los niños pequeños. Los, el estómago, vómito y diarrea. ¿Ah, sí? Sí. ¿De acuerdo? ¿Pero usted no tiene el choix? ¿Usted está obligado a darle esto? Como pues nos sale más barato y lo más rápido, pues tomamos de esta agua. Al menos nos quita la sede. Deprived of water in a region swimming in it, the inhabitants of Ocotal have asked Coca-Cola for an explanation. But the multinational claims that there's no link between its intensive pumping of water and the shortages. And to top it all, when there's no water in the village, the children drink soda. It's a never-ending story. The Chiapas Indians are in a catch-22 situation. Perhaps this is why Mexicans have become the world's biggest consumers of the beverage. And Chiapas is breaking all records, almost three cans per inhabitant a day. If you want to drink something else around here, there really is no choice. Marcus Sorana is a doctor. He denounces the omnipresence of Coca-Cola a scourge that's hurting a whole country. Ça a été quoi le déclic? Pourquoi vous vous êtes intéressé à cette boisson? Bueno, yo vine a, a Chiapas para trabajar con refugiados y, en, y el tema de desnutrición. Y hemos encontrado que en un momento muy crítico del, del crecimiento de los niños, que son los primeros dos años de vida, se definen los hábitos saludables y ahí los, las madres están también dando a sus hijos Coca-Cola y otros refrescos y esto nos llamó mucho la atención porque esto induce muy tempranamente ayuda a inducir esta adicción al azúcar. On dit quoi? On dit qu'il y a eu une Coca colonisation du Mexique? Este es un término que fue utilizado por el relator especial de Naciones Unidas 
el año pasado, estaba impresionado por la coca-colización de México. Si tú me ayudas, okay. podemos okay. hacer un clic cada vez que veamos ah. un lugar. Yo te puedo mostrar y para tener... Mira, esto es un recorrido. Sí, mira, Entonces, aquí hay un clic. Okay. Ah, dos. Estamos aquí. Es increíble. Cuatro. Es increíble porque están a la otra. Sí, sí. Cinco. Mira, aquí hay uno. Otro más ahí. D'accord. Alors là, on est donc en plein milieu des montagnes, à 2500 mètres d'altitude. Et euh, on a fait euh, allez, quelques centaines de mètres et on a déjà vu sept boutiques qui vendent du Coca-Cola. Huit. C'est terrible. Es decir, eh, no hay otro producto más disponible que Coca-Cola. Mira, puedes ver ahí también. Es el nombre, es el nombre de Coca-Cola, en, de, el nombre de la, la comunidad. Con ¿Cómo se puede hacer eso? Es posible. Mira, es terrible. Aquí ven, son dos juntas. Son dos. Aquí hay otro. ¿Cuántos vamos ahora? Là, j'en suis à 166. Es una en 42 kilómetros. Es increíble. A country repainted red and white, the perfect financial model for Coca-Cola. Even in the remotest villages of Chiapas, the multinational has deployed an unrivaled financial strategy. ¿Y los refrigeradores? Ándale, ese es prestado. Prestado. No le voy a decir porque ya me lo regaló, Ajá. porque es prestado. Sí. Un tiempo ya no quieres vender producto, lo... Por sí. veces. ¿Es que, es que en el frigidaire, vous avez el derecho de meter productos que no son de productos Coca-Cola? No. Especialmente son productos de la Coca-Cola. Ya ves que viene de sabores, no solo la Coca-Cola. Todo ese es producto de la Coca-Cola, todo el sabor que tiene ahí. Si les gens veulent boire quelque chose de frais, ils doivent acheter des produits Coca-Cola. Exactamente, así es. Muchas gracias, señor. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Donc là, il y a même des... Vu Marcos, des, des bouteilles de 3 litres. 3 litres, Un 3 sí. litres, c'est quoi 21 pesos, ça fait 1,20 euro. 7 pesos pour litre. Ouais. Et la el agua es a 8. Le litre est à 8, le litre d'eau est à 8 pesos, donc 3 litres, ça fait 24 pesos. Et c'est 21. Et, ça et on, compare, voilà, on compare avec le Coca es qui fait 21 pesos. Sí. Le Coca-Cola est moins cher que l'eau. Et c'est sí, ça sí. le problème. Mas, es, menos, menos, es más barata que el agua, sí. Je utilise le dinero pour comprar esto. Y obviamente los recursos disponibles para comprar los productos disminuyen. The Chiapas Indians can no longer live without Coca-Cola. The now all-powerful brand has even wrested a place in their religion. It has replaced posh, the traditional drink of sacred rituals. <laughs> Today, this family is praying for this little boy who is sick. They're offering to the gods seven bottles of Coca-Cola. El push, el significado como lo mismo que ahuyenta los espíritus males. Porque como para usar el push como, como hace daño a nuestro cuerpo, hace daño a nuestra alma, hace daño a nuestro espíritu, entonces quiere decir para ahuyentarlo. Que hoy, pues y Coca-Cola. Ahora, pues y Coca-Cola. Sí, ese se cree. Es la creencia actual. Como que algo ahuyenta el mal. Es visible en toda la zona indígena de los altos de Chiapas, en parte de Guatemala y por todo el península, es la cultura. La Coca-Cola se permite de chasser los espíritus porque, du coup, on rote y donc el espíritu es chassado del cuerpo, ¿es eso? Eso es la creencia. Ok. Pero se ha recuperado y se ha hecho durante ya un buen 30, 40 años y. 
In Mexico, 70% of the population is already overweight or obese. According to the Mexican Health Survey, by 2020 it'll be 100%. Back to Atlanta, Georgia. Today is Coca-Cola's big shindig, the group's annual general assembly. It's our last chance to get some explanations. The event is shareholders only, so we've bought two shares to get us in. Filming is off limits, but we took the following footage from internet, which Coca-Cola broadcasts for its shareholders worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mutar Kent. In 2011, we increased our sparkling beverage portfolio by 4% and still beverage volume by 8% globally. All told, the Coca-Cola company, your company, generated $47 billion of revenue last year. The more people drink Coke, the bigger the profits. And that's what shareholders like. I may not be able to call on everyone who's here today with a question, but I will give as many people as possible the chance, the opportunity to speak. Now the I'm CEO of Coca-Cola will pick six floor. shareholders randomly from the auditorium. We get lucky. I'm one of them. Hello, Mr. Chairman. This is um, Olivia Muchiskiewski. Hello, Mr. Chairman. I travel from France to be here with you today and to have a chance to talk with you. Uh, Mr. Kent, you are probably one of the few people in the world who may know what's in Coke. Uh, consumers like me are not so lucky and have no idea what they are really drinking. The little information we have on the recipe begs one question. What are we drinking? Uh, dear sir, you want to make this world a better place, so why, for example, do you use high fructose corn syrup, a sweetener that independent and reputable researchers say is dangerous for the health? Why do you use chemical caramel coloring when you could use a natural one? Why do you pump so much water in Mexico and in India when you could do something else? Um, or why do you not state that you still use the coca leaf in your recipe? Thank you very much, sir, for your attention. Th Thank you uh, for, for coming over from France um, to be at our annual general meeting. Um, I will say to you standing up here that every one of our 3,000 products is, are good. We are proud with the quality of every single one of our beverages. We're proud with our standards that are in many cases above the standards of the countries in which we operate, more stringent than many of the um, regulations in many environments in the world. In two minutes and 15 seconds, Mutar Kent has barely touched on our questions. During that time, his group has sold a further three million drinks worldwide. At the end of the general meeting, we run into Ray Rogers, the founder of Killer Coke. Like every year, he's here to ask the Atlanta Giants some awkward questions. And like every year, he's gotten no answers. So he's organized a protest outside Coca-Cola headquarters with a handful of people. This is the headquarters. We're going to go in and we're going to talk to whoever's in charge. No, so sir. let them know. This is private property, sir. Well, I, I own this. We all co own this. We're shareholders. Well, I have an appointment. Who's your appointment with? You with whoever's in charge. No, sir. So we're going to ask that you move either on the sidewalks or back across the street there. And we're going to ask the police officer to instruct you guys that you have to move because you can't block the driveway. And do, are you a shareholder? Uh, No, I'm not. Well, I mean, how does he have authority and we don't? I mean, I'm holding right here. The main thing is we had the presence in the meeting, then some people came out and said, let's create a, a visual presence, maybe some good photo shots to show that we are building something here in Atlanta, which is the home territory of the Coca-Cola company. And as you saw there, with some of the Occupy Atlanta people walking and saying, we want a meeting. 
Well, now they're saying, we didn't get our meeting. You're going to arrest us. There's just a few of us, so maybe we'll come back next year with several hundred people. And it might make it a little more difficult to try to intimidate us. So it's uh, David versus Goliath, but there's uh, lots of Davids out there. After a six-month investigation, we have penetrated part of the mysterious recipe. We have also discovered another facet of the Coca-Cola world, one you never see in their ads. A face hidden behind the myth of the secret formula. A marketing of mystery that allows them not to answer the questions billions of consumers have the right to ask.